for the change. They want a little bit more leadership, a little bit more stability back there, plus a bigger spark coming off of the bench. So we'll see how Wilkins handles that mentally, and if he does a good job, then perhaps that will make this road trip an easier one for the New York Knicks. You saw Patrick Ewing getting his knee pads and thigh pads all put in place. Ewing is having a marvelous year. 22 points, 9 rebounds, 3.6 blocks a game. And last night in Seattle, Steve, he had a career-high 8 block shots. Well, I think Ewing has now become the center of dominance that everyone thought he would be coming into the NBA his first year. And, of course, under Hubie Brown, he ain't suffered some injury problems, but also was used as a forward. And now you find out that he's a big mobile center who loves to get in a track meet, run people up and down the floor, and can score inside, which many think, many thought he couldn't do. Our officials tonight are the veteran Jack Madden, along with a couple of youngsters, Joey Borgia and Joe Forty. Borgia will toss the ball in the air. Jack Madden steps in and will move some players around the center circle. We'll be underway. Kevin Duckworth will jump against Patrick Ewing. Portland and the New York Knicks. Glad to have you aboard tonight. Thanks for being with us. Close to five. Close to five. Mark Jackson. He's set up with Gary Porter. Charles Oakley and Mark Bryan. Ewing. Won't fall for him. Strong rebound, Kirsten. Porter leads to Mark Bryan. Mark Bryant do run the floor and drive it home, and that time he cocked the hammer. He got the crowd awake here from Calhoun. Mark Jackson scores off the penetration. Jackson much stronger as a penetrator than he is as a perimeter shooter. Two two time, opening minute. Person and Bryant. out of Seton Hall and the Blazers first round draft choice. He's got a tough test tonight with Oakley, one of the league's premier rebounders. Oakley. Person. Kevin Duckworth. 6-2 Portland. Blazers have made their first three shots and have a four-point lead. And quickly, Rick Pitino will ask for a 20-second timeout. Nice start for Portland, Steve. Well, that's a terrific start. When you look at the types of shots that they had at the op offensive end, two dunks by Bryant and then a nice medium-range shot by Kevin Duckworth. They moved the ball. They got people in areas where they could be effective. And I'm sure that what they're talking about is a Nick Huddle right now is defense. They want to have more pressure on the ball, make Portland shoot the ball over the top. Mark Bryant off to a fast start, and of course, you're hoping to develop him in time for the playoffs and make him a force. Well, if you run the floor like this, that certainly helps your development, and I think he has to look for more opportunities to do that. They got some concern right now about where our cameraman is. They want him back as far as they can get him. That means he'll be sitting in our lap. <laughs> Charles Oakley. 6-2 Blazers with quite a minute and a half. Ewing on the double team. Now to Jackson and back to Ewing. Blazers double in and steal by two quarters. Duckworth. Porter draws you. This match inside. Well, they had a double team and they didn't pick it up. Air ball and Kirsty makes the save. Heartbreak roll for Jerome. Kirsty steals. Two tough rolls for Portland. Two minutes gone. 6 2 Portland. Trent Tucker loves the three. Tucker is a street perimeter player, and when he gets hot, that's when you really have to be concerned because his confidence and his attitude about the offensive end really gets very aggressive. And when he's missing, then he seems to be more of a drifter and stays out of the ball game. Six to Portland. Porter around to Bryant pick by Drexler into Duckworth. Draws the double. Porter open high. Traveling is called. 
first turnover of the ball game on Portland. As we have a chance to watch the sidelines tonight, and Rick Pitino, the New York coach, Steve, our fans will see the most active sideline coach in the NBA now. This guy's a mile a minute. Classic New Yorker. And that, and that, come on! And the kid used to get into the garden and sit in the cheap seat. Johnny Newman for three. Newman is the number two three-point shooter on the team, with Tucker being number one. Near mistake by the Trailblazers as they threw long. They really didn't have a chance to get Breck for a play on that ball. Ewing trying to make the save, gives it back to Portland at midcourt. Against the press, you'd like to inbound it and then look up the floor. 6-5 Portland. Three minutes gone, first quarter. Cursing. Ewing the rebound. Newman. Deflected pass by Drexler out of bounds. Knicks will retain possession. The shot clock at 18. Newman. Offensive rebound. Newman knocked away by the Blazers. Porter. And then by Kersen. Newman. Rebound by Drexler. Blazers second leading rebound. Porter. A great pass at the basket by Drexler. Porter catches and drops it in for an easy two. Portland Bay, New York 5. And we'll have a jump ball. And it was a jump ball. It looked as though the official from the rear thought that Drexler had reached across the arm and Clyde had really got very quick hands. And this is a, a, a real good look at how he can get his hands and tie the ball up. He controls the time. 825 left first quarter. Glazier's up by three. Drexler, first shot. Ewing, weak side rebound. Jackson in the middle. Cutters left and right. Jackson. Ball belongs to New York. Jackson spinning in the lane, trying to get control. The ball goes out of bounds off the Trailblazers, and Knicks get it back. Patrick Ewing, his spot, his shot. It's for the New York City. And Portland against the press has for a 20 second timeout. There's Rick Pitino, 36 years of age, youngest coach in the NBA. The transformation, according to those who have followed the Knicks, has been rather remarkable, and a large part of that was selling his players on that style, Steve. Well, I, I think what he has done is not only sell them on the style, but then gotten the results out on the floor. It's one thing to convince. It's another thing to produce the results in the second half of the season. They saw this style become effective, get them into the playoffs, and now they feel that they are as good and can compete with almost anybody in the NBA, and so it's much easier to have that effort go into it. Mike Schiller of the Portland Trailblazers, like Rick Pitino, a gentleman who at a very early age wanted to be a head basketball coach. Both had the dream and both are here. Well, they go long again to Drexler. This time he's lucky enough to catch the ball. But the is Montana and Rice. Percy. First field goal for Jerome. Blazers lead by three. 7.40 to go. First period. Tucker. Smooth offensive move by Tucker. It makes it a one-point game. And the pass that Ryan has made the last couple of times is the one that they invite you to make. If you'd like to do is try to center that ball right in the middle of the court if you can, and then immediately they look down the floor because that's where you're going to put pressure on the pressure shot. Now, Drexler is saying, look, I'm holding Jackson. I've got a clear 40 feet ahead of me if you can get it over the top. Blazers bring Duckworth into backcourt. A lot of teams bring their center back to help against the press, and often it's very effective. It's effective because centers don't press center. Person lost it. Here's Johnny Newman. Strong driver. Can't score, no traveling call, can't draw the foul. Mark Bryan. Portland 12, New York 9. Seven minutes left. Quarter number one. Body 
bodies colliding. It really it broke down the play when Jackson tried to come in. He got a screen, but thought he was going to be able to get free and draw the foul, and we go to a break. Six forty-two left first quarter. Portland leading New York twelve to nine. We mentioned the Knicks currently on a seven-game road trip over 11 days. They've lost the first three, and that's against Golden State, Sacramento, and Seattle. After Portland, it gets tougher. Here's Bryant. What a move! Won't go. I'll tell you, he was floating through there like Dr. J. Ewing to Jackson. If you let Jackson, Newman, Tucker get a good beat on it, they can hurt you. Drexler at the back. Jackson's field goal is a 30 footer. Portland now back up by two, 13, or 14 to 12. Drexler, first field goal. All the Blazers now in the scoreboard. Let's have everybody there but Charles Oakley. Tucker, Newman. Steele, Person. Porter tried to hit Duckworth. That's the kick. Newman. Uh, Newman was down on the floor and was slow to get up, and the steal got the Knicks an easy two. 14-14 tie. Percy knocked down hard. Foul is on Charles Oakley. And when the oak tree takes you down, you fall like a broken branch. Foul is Charles Oakley hit first. First team foul. Drexler with good penetration, drawing the defense and setting up Jerome Searcy for an opportunity to get to the free throw. Last year, the New York Knicks were second to Seattle for most fouls in the NBA. Steve, six and a half minutes, and that's our first foul of the night. Gerald Wilkins in, Johnny Newman out. Jerome Kersey makes one of two of the Blazers lead, 15-14. Ewing. Ewing has done a better job of recognizing how to handle double team spins away from the pressure. Following backcourt, I think on Patrick Ewing. Into the ball game for New York. Will be Sidney Green. Green out of Nevada, Las Vegas, but originally was a prep star in New York. He replaces Charles Oakley. 16-15, New York on top. Middle Sydney. And you hear Rick Pacino tell him Middle Sydney, so they wanted him in the middle as they double team the ball. Shot back now at 11. Drexler. And Sydney has it back. It was out of bounds. When he caught the ball, he was coming back across the baseline. So New York with a one-point lead and five minutes to go in the quarter. Jackson for three. Eight points now for Mark Jackson, including back-to-back three-pointers. 1950 New York, Drexler finds Kersey. Jerome fumbles it, Drexler, or, uh, Duckworth, and Drexler taps it in. Four for five, 1917, New York by two. Thing you want to do against the pressure is continue to attack the basket. Wilkins on the drive. Ewing on the tap, no basket interference, third field goal for Patrick Ewing. 21-17 New York. Blazers break the press. Drexler. Cut the ball in there from Jerome and turn 180 to bank it in. Clyde Drexler now with six quick points. 21-19 New York. Four minutes to go in the quarter. Well played game. Ewing. Patrick Ewing now with eight. He is four from five. He's made four straight. Mixed by four. Duckworth. Person. Down the lane. Bryant. Tap it up and in. Mark Bryant. Eight points for Mark Bryant. Blazers within two. Blazers have yet to commit a foul. Team foul. But the Knicks get a good shot. Set on the year, but he's three for three tonight. Drexler deep against Ewing. Ewing blocks. 
Drexler scores and is followed by Hewitt. Back again. You saw a graphic example of the marvelous ability of Drexler. Now watch him just see right here. Wait a minute. Somebody fouled me. Now watch. He'll look around, put his hand on the hip, and recognize, well, we're still playing ball. Go to the basket and recover, pick up the personal foul, has a chance for a three-point play. Going out of the ball game. It is number 45, Eddie Lee Wilkins. Wilkins is a 6'10 and a half journeyman out of Gardner West. Hard now has come on strong for nine points, and he's done it to her. Three minutes left in the quarter, next by two. Here's Rod Strickland. Let go. Percy, another rebound. Drum foul. Force inside. Drexler, Bryant. Danny Young in for Portland now. Duckworth. And Bryant will be called for the foul. And the Blazers get their first personal foul of the night. New York comes with 2.43 left in the quarter. We also have a timeout. Score. Knicks 26, Blazers 24. Steve Johnson now will match up with Eddie Lee Wilkins. Caldwell Jones as he comes in. He'll be paired with. They know they change the matchups. They put the Caldwell on Eddie Lee and they put Steve Johnson on Sidney Green. Gerald Wilkins. Rod Strickland. Harold, Eddie to Gerald. Three point try, no good. Steve Johnson had it. Knocked out of bounds, and the ball is given to Portland. Probably should have belonged to New York. Kersey, pressured by Strickland. Danny Young with Johnny Newman. Clyde Drexler, Steve Johnson. Eddie Lee, foul prone. Shot clock at seven, Kersey. Tied at 26. It's our third tie. The thing that Strickland does very well for a rookie is penetrate and create problems for the defense. If you put pressure on him, he'll just spin away. They look to Wilkins inside. Eddie Lee Wilkins, averaging five a game, gets his first field goal, and the Knicks are up by two. Blazers transition. Steve Johnson. That's what happens when you beat the press and attack. You have numbers, good pass from Drexler, an easy two for Steve Johnson. Oh, and he's thinking the thousands of times he ran that drill at Oregon State. Gerald Wilkins, big clock inside, Caldwell, Strickland again. Here comes Jerome, three on two break. Percy for Drexler.
20 seconds to go. A shot clock, two and a half game clock. Lasers up 33 28. You see the game clock on your screen. Shot what, clock is now at seven. What you want to do in this situation is be your best of defense. You don't want a player like Strickland to come at you because once he gets that close to you, he's going to beat you and create the problem. You want to force him to pick the ball up and go up as a director. And he was the guy that got to do what he wanted to do right at the heart of the defense. Rod Strickland. Rod Strickland. Left the ball after three years, averaged 20 points a game there a year ago. A lot of people in New York think this should be getting more play time. Well, that's what the people think. The coach doesn't think that. The Lakers do not get the shot off in time. We've played one at the Coliseum. We've got a game to go. Lakers lead New York by four. Certainly it's going 11. They come back with. Patrick Ewing in the middle along with Mark Jackson at the point. Trailblazers send Kiki Vandewey into the ball game along with Kevin Duckworth and Caldwell Jones on the front line. The backcourt now, Terry Porter and Danny Young. Here's Young, two-pointer. Danny Young now with three points and Portland has its largest lead at six, 35-29. Blazers shot 60% in the opening quarter of the next 50. Sydney Green, strong drive. Scored with authority and foul. Those are the kinds of plays that are often made coaches want Sidney Green. He has the ability to put the ball on the floor, drive it in with a lot of force and power. That time, saw the lane open, drove it home with two hands, picked up the foul against Caldwell Jones. First foul on CJ. Three-point play for Sidney Green, and the Blazer lead is three. 11 and a half minutes to go, first half. Terry Porter. Duckworth. And Kevin scores. Second basket for Kevin Duckworth. Portland 37, New York 32. Find away now with Johnny Newman. Three point try. Rebound, Caldwell Jones. Finds Find away. Great pass, Porter. Duckworth can't finish. Rebound, Mark Jackson. Newman. Ewing. Offensive foul. Charged into Caldwell Jones. Second foul on Patrick Ewing. Now Ewing went just a little too deep. Probably should have settled for the little medium range jump shot that Jones was giving him. Decided he wanted to drive it home. Initiated the contact and got the whistle. Duckworth, hold! Oh! Kevin Duckworth took it home with authority. 39-32, Portland largest lead, seven. And Patino wants the New York timeout. 29 left to go, first half. Lasers up, I-7. Well, the New York Knicks came in tonight off of three consecutive road losses. The Portland Trailblazers certainly far better rested, and Portland so far has been running, playing exciting basketball, and it seems to be a more aggressive, up-tempo team than the Blazers we've seen much of the year. Well, one of the things that the Knicks style does, it forces you to be aggressive, certainly at the offensive end. You've got to look for those chief chances down the other way as we take a look at the Blazers. and and. The thing that Portland has done well is force the Knicks to play a little bit more tentative than they would like to. They like a little bit more penetration, and of course, they like to see the ball in the hands of Patrick Ewing in the center a lot more. Both of these teams force their, force their opponents to a little over 20 turnovers per ball game. So far, the Blazers have made four. The Knicks have made half a dozen. The Blazers have had a, some very nice offensive work so far. One of the things that's been impressive to me has been the transition involving not only the guards, but even the big guys running the floor pretty well. Duckworth, Johnson, and uh, Mark Bryan in the first quarter. Well, I've told you a thousand times that if a guy can figure <laughs> out a way to get a cheap two, he's going to run the floor. And, and whenever you see a lane open and you've got people that are going to give you the basketball, you're going to make yourself available, and that is part of the success of the Trailblazers here in the first half of play. One NBA final today, Boston beat Detroit 112-99. Rick Pitino 
returns to the New York bench, his counterpart, Mark, Mike Schuler on the other sideline. Let's take a look at our Computerland fast stats, and you see the Knicks, kings of the three-point play. Patino has told his team to get a good shot this time. They feel that they have to score on this possession as Portland's beginning to build some momentum. They come to Ewing. Rebound, Caldwell Jones. Played well since he came off the bench. Here's Vandoway. Johnny, get him in! Danny Young. No metal, John! Finds Vandoway. Duckworth with Ewing. Traveling call on Kevin. Jack Madden made the call. Ten minutes to go, first half, 39-32, Blazers by seven. You can shoot a pass. Gerald Wilkins. Reach around. Foul Danny Young. Penetration and good positioning by Gerald Wilkins gets him a chance right here. They put him on the line. It looked like he may have been passing. That is a charity two-point chance. Many of you, of course, know Gerald Wilkins is the younger brother of Atlanta's Dominique Wilkins. Eddie Lee Wilkins, the reserve New York center, is no relation to the other two. That's our obligatory reference to the Wilkins family tree. Danny Young with Newman. Vandoy. Traveling. Well, that's the presence of the shot blocker. Vandoy had it, was going to pull the trigger, had to shuffle his feet as he reset. And it's a turnover against Portland and a five point advantage for Portland. Wilkins inside to Newman. Vandoy leaping around to try for the steal and is called for the foul. As most Blazer fans know, Vandoy is a player that the Knicks openly coveted and still may. In fact, at one time, there was widely rumored to be possible talks of a Vandoy for Johnny Newman deal, but Newman's played well. They're matched with each other now. Ewing. Jackson. Patrick. Patrick Ewing continues to shoot very well. He has 10 points, and Patrick so far has made five of seven shots from the floor. Laser lead is three. Caldwell to Vandaway. Quick pass, Duckworth. Lost the ball. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson shows you his ball handling ability behind the back, between the leg, to get that tough finger roll to go down. Vandoy deep. Kiki Vandoy, first field goal of the night. Blazers 41, Knicks 38. 8.35 left in the half. The Knicks are going to give you that opportunity over the top, but you have to constantly look up and look ahead. Wilkins against Caldwell Jones. Ewing saves. Shot clock 10. Newman. Ball out of bounds and belongs to New York. Shot clock will go to five. Five seconds on the shot clock. Portland never had control, and a New York ball, New York shot never hit the rim. Trent Tucker returns for New York. You can't allow the Knicks to get an easy shot. Jackson works solo. Rebound, Danny Young. Ball knocked away. Offensive foul, Danny Young. And a very quiet Danny Young quarrels with Joy Borgia on the call. Mike Schuler not happy. Danny Young looking and knowing he's got a chance to make penetration. And his momentum carries him into the defender. And the whistle goes against him. And the crowd does not like it here. Timeout. 8.07 left first half. Blazers up by three. Rick Pitino in the middle of a New York huddle as he talks with his club. Middle of a seven-day road trip. Steve, when you go on the long road trips like New York is on right now, their longest of the year, seven games, 11 days, is there a different coaching style, and do you have to work with your players in a different fashion? 
Well, it really depends on how your team is responding and playing. If you're playing very well, you change very little. If you begin to struggle a little bit, then you're going to make some adjustments. The key to their success has been their defensive pressure, and they will try to keep that up as long and as hard as they can. Saturday night, the Blazers meet the Atlanta Hawks, and if you're not already a multi-game package subscriber, please call your cable company this week. Ask for Blazer Cable, and you'll see Portland and Atlanta. Again, 7.30 is game time. NBA Signature starts at all at 7 o'clock. Let's take a look again at Computerland Fast Stats. Coming up in just a moment as we bring some more interesting information to you from the files of our stat team. good numbers Steve. Well both teams have got the same number of field goals in the air and the Trailblazers have got four more of them down. Significant sometimes what just two or three <laughs> field goals in will do to your percentage. Steve Jones courtside at the Coliseum. Our director is George Wash. Our assistant director, Monica Spolstra. Our statistician is Stan Manasha. Glad to have you with us tonight. Eight minutes left, second quarter, and the Blazers are leading New York by three. It's been a good one. Charles Oakley back in for New York. Missed the shot. That's the kind of shot that got Charles out of Chicago. He wanted to take it. Doug Collins didn't want him to. Clyde Drexler. Porter. Rebound inside to Oakley. Mark Jackson. With Jackson, you have to stop him with the ball. That's what makes the saving block. He's got the ability to see the floor and make the pass at the same time. And if he gets in this area, he's going to create some problems. Good scramble by Duckworth. And the Trailblazers have the Knicks with 17 seconds on the shot clock. Oakley. Pass inside. Vandalay with the hack foul. And Kiki, it'll be his second. I'll tell you, Steve, if you look at the Trailblazers, the last guys you'd think would lead the team in fouls tonight would be Kiki Vandeweghe and Danny Young. If Young has three and Kiki two, the only Blazers with more than one. Jackson, three-pointer. First one he's missed. He's been three for three. Caldwell the rebound. Pitched inside and dribbles out of trouble. Vandeweghe. Yes. 43-38, Portland, 7.05 left in the half. Jackson looking for Ewing. Stolen by Drexler with Tucker to beat. They go to the line and shoot two. Ball is on Trent Tucker. Well, it's hard to explain how good Drexler is at this. You just reach in and take the ball away from someone else, but most of the time, players are not able to make that play. They can get a piece of their hand on the ball, but they can't get both. Drexler rips it away and goes the other way, draws the foul. Jerome Kersey back in for the Trailblazers. Clyde Drexler is so good at stealing, I wonder if he ever made his bank employees nervous when he was interning with them in Houston during the summer. 45-38 Blazers in Clyde now with 15. Newman. Ooh, tough shot by Newman. Beat the pressure of Caldwell Jones. I know he thought he got fouled. They come back with pressure. Blazers by five. Porter. Duckworth. Kersey. Drexler. Inside the duck. Ewing blocks. Jackson. Three on two. Tucker for three. Rebound, Terry Porter. Kersey. Comes in on Ewing. Scores, Kersey. 47-40, midway through the second. Ewing. Official. Let's see what the video verdict is. Well, Drexler's trying to make the block from the rear. He thinks he's going to surprise him. Gets up there, thought he had all of the ball and may have had that. They call the call as they can sometimes down low with the body. 
Second foul on Clyde. Fifth team on the Blazers. And Ewing misses. Ewing has had a superb year shooting from the floor. He's also brought his free throw percentage up to 75. Nick's in there, 1 2 2 full court press. Drexler. Percy couldn't handle it. Clyde's got it back. Jump ball. Ewing. Fine defensive play by Patrick. 47 41 Portland. That's one. Well, Clyde was trying to go up against Ewing. He thought he had the good angle and was going to be able to out quick him. Ewing with the good arm makes the block. Patrick Patrick. control. Jackson broke lost to Drexler. Score! <laughs> Fouled and will try for a three-point play. Watch this. Well, again, the athletic ability of Drexler says it all. Splits the defense. Still has just enough to finish the play. Squeezes it in. Now has a chance for another three-point play. Clyde Drexler, he's got five in the quarter and 18 in the game. 50-41, Portland's largest lead at nine. Ewing is out to New York, Eddie Lee Wilkins is in. Newman under pressure. Foul called with two on the shot clock. It's on Kevin Duckworth trying to deny the inside pass. Well, you have to remember, again, part of good defense is understanding who you're guarding. Wilkins can score inside, but he's not the same threat that Patrick Ewing is. So you might want to see, if you're the defender, just what kind of offensive game he's got by allowing him to catch the ball on the box and see what kind of moves he's going to make. You certainly know he's not going to overpower you. He's coming off of a serious knee problem. He may not even be able to jump over you. Worst free throw shooter on the Nick team. Makes one of two. Portland 50, New York 42. Blocking foul. Johnny Newman. Newman is hurt. Well, his pride is hurt more than anything else. Newman thought he was going to be able to step in and surprise Drexler and draw the foul. Did not. Jackson out of the ball game. Rod Strickland. As you take a look at Newman trying to step up and surprise Drexler. Caldwell finds Duckworth. And Eddie Lee Wilkins was trying to corral the big guy down low. Now, Eddie Lee understands what kind of a load he has at the other end and can't allow him to get in on the box or anywhere in that painted area. Got caught with both forearms on, in the back. Portland will get the ball back. Rick Patino, a constant stream of chatter at his team. Or he leads the NBA coaches in WPM, words per minute. Jerome lost the ball off the dribble. Rod Strickland. Nick's down by eight. Newman for three. Newman, Newman has made the lead. Three-point range. That means infinity. Drexler back with penetration. Can't finish. Eddie Lee. Steal, Kersey. Johnny Newman. Lasers by five. Newman. They'll wave it off. Offensive foul, Johnny Newman. Pride is hurt again. Well, Newman, knowing that the best way to go to the basket is right straight down the floor, tried to go through Caldwell Jones. Drexler, he's going to chase this one. He went, went up in the air and made a pass to no one. He was going to be the first one to get it, and he couldn't touch it. The air in the last play, Terry Porter was so late getting the forecourt. Beautiful play, Drexler. Too far under, we get the foul call. Yes, came late. It's on Rod Strickland. Clyde couldn't believe the foul call came so late. Portland has stayed aggressive at the offensive end against the pressure by realizing who the open men have been. Rod Strickland trying to make a save. Picks up a personal foul. Strickland out of the ball game. Mark Jackson returns. Adrian Brandt, Portland Minuteman, a 
one a minute in, and Duckworth will go down. So the Blazers now get much smaller. They have a Drexler Kersey tandem at forward, or I'm sorry, Branch and Kersey at forward, Drexler and Porter in backcourt. But it's four very quick, active players. Clyde now, six of six at the line. He has 20 points. Wilkins. Rebound, Adrian Branch. Percy. Drexler. Score! Clyde Drexler from Jerome. Blazer passing tonight has been better than I've seen it in a long time. The team is playing very unselfishly tonight. Not just the short passing, Steve, but even the long vertical passing. Now they're looking for Oakley down on the back. Give him a chance to work against a smaller Drexler, and he finger rolls it in. First basket for Charles Oakley. 54-47, Blazers. Porter throws it away. Oh, Mike Schuler didn't like that. Schuler pounded the ball on the floor. Rod Strickland is in. Mark Jackson back out. 3.19 to go. First half, Blazers up by seven. Now this is where Strickland is dangerous. He got inside, tried to finish the ball, is knocked away. Drexler. Porter. Terry Porter, second basket tonight. The assist by Drexler. Porter with seven assists tonight. Kersey with five already. Clyde with three. Gerald Wilkins. Newman. No basket. Foul is called. It's on Caldwell Jones, his second foul. Uh, you can see why they like Johnny Newman so much. He can shoot over the top, he can take it to the basket, he floats this one in, draws a foul against Caldwell Jones. Johnny Newman, waved by the Cavaliers, picked up by New York a year ago. Pretty good find off the waiver wire. Blazer lead is seven, 240 left, first half. Drexler is holding a smaller Strickland and gets easy two with the pass from Porter over the top. He's got 11 in the period, 24 on the night. What a show by Clyde Drexler tonight. Glad you're enjoying it on Blazer Cable. Game also being telecast back to New York. Portland up by nine. Wilkins to Wilkins. Gerald scores, Eddie Lee the assist. Gerald Wilkins, first field goal, fourth point. 58-51. Two minutes to go in the quarter. Adrian Branch. Instant offense, Adrian Branch. 60-51, Portland by nine. Next rebound by Terry Porter will be the 1,000th of his career. Newman. Almost had it, but instead, Eddie Lee. Eddie Lee Wilkins. Now that's why Wilkins made the team. Just hustle and scramble. That looked like it was going to turn into a fast break opportunity for Portland and ends up for two in the Knicks. Three point try. Rebound, Rod Strickland. Newman. Lock. Percy. Jerome's played well tonight. Branch. Drexler. Boom. 26 for five. Portland by nine, a minute five left. Well, that's not a combination you want to see in the open court. Branch or Drexler, and they leave it for Clyde. He jams it home with two hands. Oakley powers inside. Charles Oakley, he has four. Ball will belong to New York on the Blazer turnover. Trent Tucker returns for New York, and Mark Bryant comes back for the Trailblazers. Portland, 13 turnovers, and New York has nine. Uh, Drexler comes out of the ball game. Well, I'll tell you, there's a well-deserved rest. Caldwell Jones also out. Jerry Seasting in, Kevin Duckworth back in. Well, the one thing the Knicks are saying, hey, we have played 
uh, not up to our capabilities. Trailblazers have been playing extremely well. They've had a lot of open court opportunities, and they find themselves only down by seven. So they work on the idea of wearing you down, and if they can stay within seven to ten points, they feel they still have a chance. Inside the Wilkins. Right, Jerry Seaston. 35 seconds left in the quarter. Branch. Yes. It may not be textbook, but it works. Blazers by nine. Shot clock. Six ahead of the game clock. Strickland finds Tucker for three. Sidney Green. Offensive foul. Oh, Patino almost pulled the sport coat off. He's already had one team. Get him a second. He'll watch from the locker room. Foul is on Sidney Green. All right, shot clock is off. Ten to play. Quarter. Two seconds. Seasting. And that'll do it. First half is over. Our score in addition. The Trailblazers 64. The New York Knicks 55. Trailblazers lead at halftime 64 55 and we had enough highlights in the first two quarters for a double length feature film Steve well you know whenever the Knicks are in town that it means that there's going to be a lot of open court opportunities and the Trailblazers attack right out of the box a good penetrating pass from Terry Porter allowed Bryant to get the shot and jam it home. Good defensive pressure. And again, Bryant is a recipient of a good open court pass and an easy two. So Bryant had his confidence and a chance to score for Portland. Very effective right off. Now the Knicks are a team, as a team, that used a three-point field goal shot more than any other. Johnny Newman got the first and right out of it, and almost any field goal attempt that is made, the Knicks are going to apply pressure. They're looking inside for their offensive hub in Patrick Ewing, and Ewing has developed into a much better offensive player. John Thompson perhaps said it best. At Georgetown, he held them down, and now Ewing has broken loose. Long passes sometimes against the press can create a problem for you, but they can also make some opportunities. Portland really didn't handle the ball as smoothly as they'd like, but they still took advantage of early transition, and Jerome Kersey made a shot, and Portland really was keeping the pressure on the New York Knicks by looking the other way. Mark Jackson had a, a great first period with three-point field goal shooting, and that was the first of three in a row that he was able to get down. The key man in the open court for Portland tonight has been Clyde Drexler, and whenever he's seen himself in a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two situation, he's felt confident he could score and has got the job done. Jackson again, against no defense, buries it. Now, you, you talk about Jackson's percentage, but if you give him time, his percentage goes up dramatically. Drexler down again. The attacker against Patrick Ewing. This time Ewing able to block it. How do you watch? He thought he got fouled. <laughs> Jackson comes over and tries to steal the ball and then they immediately come back to Drexler who does pick up the personal foul and a chance for a three-point play. Clyde made 10 out of 14 shots from the field and all six of his free throws in a marvelous first half. Well, Gerald Wilkins is a, is a fine athlete in his own right. He doesn't play above the rim quite as well as his brother, Dominique. The Trailblazers get a block from Caldwell Jones and then a tough cry from Rod Strickland. And whenever you miss, the defense is going to be broken down. Jerome Kersey in the open court and leaves it for Clyde Drexler, who jackhammers at home. Jerome, with we mentioned five assists in the first half, and I thought he passed the ball much better tonight than he normally has done. Well, if you don't pass well in the open court, you come over and sit down. You've got to be able to see some of these people, and Portland has had almost obvious situations where players have been available, and they have done the right thing. They've made the extra pass, and it's gotten them good results. An unfortunate break for Kevin Duckworth working out. Watch the ability of Mark Jackson to handle the ball, maintain body control, finger roll as he gets all. That's a five-corner shot right there. He gets all five corners, and that one bounces in for him. The Knicks come back 
with Patrick Ewing on another outside jump shot. You want to keep Jackson, Strickland, those ball handlers out of the middle because they create a lot of problems for you. But if they do get inside, they break the defense down, and a guy like Drexler can go coast to coast, and he finger rolls that one in. Blazers had 24 points off the fast break. New York had only four. Well, the Knicks have not had as many chances to run. They've had more chances to set up and shoot three-pointers. Newman showing you his range, backpedals on that one. But they have been able to stay in the ball game. And so Rick Pitino has got to tell his team at halftime, fellas, we're not playing that badly when you consider the way that Portland has been able to score. Trailblazers leading by a nine-point margin. Clyde Drexler with 26 points. One other game in the NBA today, Steve. So your segment on Around the NBA will be a short one tonight. Well, the NBA had a doubleheader sandwiched around the Super Bowl. And the early part of the doubleheader was the Detroit Pistons playing at the Boston Garden. The Boston Celtics win for the second straight time, led in the ball game by Kevin McHale's 27 and Robert Parrish's 22. The losers we're led by Isaiah Thomas's 26, Vinnie Johnson 24. We'll be back with a look at an NBA feature and more when we return. Blazers up by nine at halftime. Let's go to our computer lens stats board. Well, Drexler book in first period, uh, first and second period to be Portland's leading score. And Mark Jackson did not get as much activity at the offensive end for the New York Knicks, followed by Johnny Newman. You see how well Portland has shot the ball, and Steve, out of those 28 Portland field goals, 21 have been lay-ins. Well, any time you can get that many close opportunities, you're going to shoot better than 60%, and if you don't, then you better all go put your arms in, in cement, and you can see a dramatic difference between the percentages. The Knicks have stayed in the ball game with some good free-throwing and some free three-point opportunities. You'll see the Portland has dominated the board, both teams are almost even in turnovers. 64-55, our score at halftime. Clyde Drexler certainly put on a spectacular show earlier in the season. You know, we saw that double overtime game with Sacramento. He scored a career-high 50, and it's not out of the realm of possibility that he could make a run on it tonight with the tempo of this Portland-New York game. Well, the tempo has been such, and the opportunities have been such that he could get to that number. Let's give him another 13, and that would put him at 39. <laughs> but if that is the case, the game may be out of hand by then. The Knicks are going to have to make an impression on the Trailblazers here in the third period in order to get some control of the game. They're only down nine, but they really haven't had any control. This game at this point belongs to Portland, and Portland has to continue to do the things that got them the lead. All right, now one face that will not be on the floor for the Trailblazers in the second half will be Steve Johnson. Steve re-sprained that left ankle in the first half, played brief minutes, and as a result, he is out now for the rest of tonight. Steve Johnson. 64-55, Blazers led by four after one and then outscored the Knicks in the second quarter, 31 to 26. Terry Porter matched up with Mark Jackson, two of the NBA's top four assists. Mark Bryant, fast start again. Blazers often try and call an early play for Bryant, don't they, Steve? Well, I'm not sure that they do, but it wouldn't help if they did. Uh, you know, certainly that makes you feel involved offensively as the Knicks look inside of Ewing. Ewing. Pass for Jackson on the give and go, knocked away and out of bounds. Now Ewing took only six shots in the first half, made four. Ewing lost the ball. Here's Clyde. Left it for Mark Bryant. Foul is called, but on the pass off, Clyde will not shoot. Trent Tucker gets called for the foul. It's his second. First team foul on New York in this half. Both teams starting the same lineups they did at the beginning of the game, and for New York, that means Trent Tucker instead of Gerald Wilkins at the off guard. The middle is open for Kersey, and he makes a tough shot against the defensive pressure of Patrick Ewing. 68-55, Portland now its largest lead at 13. New York's largest was five. Three-point try, Jackson. Rebound, Mark Bryant. And we've got Jerome Kersey and Johnny Newman tangling. Joe Borgia, 
jumping in to break things up. And Mike Schuler out trying to calm down Jerome. Well, we'll take a look as you see. <laughs> Wexler has the jersey of Johnny Newman. And then that's when the words are exchanged. But when there's only conversation, there's very little danger of anything happening. Now they call a double technical foul. We have a chance to see the replays. Jerome throwing a sweeping right hand. Should he have been ejected for throwing that punch? What they didn't see it. I mean, you can't eject someone for something that you didn't see. That's the luxury that we have here on the sideline. All right. Here's Duckworth. Ewing. Foul call back foot. It's on Jerome Kersey. First personal foul on Jerome. 68-55, Portland. Ewing, Jackson. Johnny Newman around Jerome. Tough roll, Duckworth rebound, foul. Kevin Duckworth. Second personal foul on Duck. Well, Newman turned down a three-point opportunity, missed a tougher try, and the official calls a foul against Kevin Duckworth for bodying Oakley out of position. Inside to Ewing. Ten twenty-two left, third quarter, Portland 68, New York 55. Foul is on Terry Porter, and that's his first. So the Blazers quickly now with three team fouls. When, when a team is struggling, you don't want to allow them to get into the penalty and find an easy way to score. Oakley and Mark Bryant. Call the foul on Bryant. Mark was just standing there. Oakley turned right into it. I think that's the wrong call. Let's watch. Or you'll see the ball come in, and you have to allow at least the offensive player a chance to turn. There wasn't, as you see Bryant move in. And what you saw from that is two big men <laughs> alive. <laughs> so they've been able to force Ewing away from the box. Misses that roll in the middle, and Duckworth travels trying to control the ball. Mike Schiller on the sidelines really upset as he thought a foul should have been called. Duckworth being bumped. Uh, right here, he gets the ball, and what happens is he goes out of bounds. Now, he travels in time to set his feet. 68-55. Here's Oakley. He still isn't good on that shot. Three on one break. Mark Bryant. Rebound, New York. Jackson. Mark Jackson. 15 for Jackson. It's 68-57. Uh, Portland had the ball with seemed like it. I mean, the Knicks had the ball with seemed like an eternity at the other end. It never could score. Then they scored transition. Missed inside by Bryant. Kersey. 11 for Jerome Kersey after Mark Bryant misses a couple of... Really good shots, 70-57, 9-10 to go here in the third period. Deflection, Kersey, steal, Jerome. Terry Porter. Yes, Terry Porter. Half a dozen for Terry, and we've got a 20-second timeout taken by Rick Pitino. Draft your own NBA team and you could win a Rippling River Resort golf getaway or a year's supply of gasoline from Texaco or you may pick up a new 1989 automobile. Be sure and check Friday's sports section of the Oregonian either this past Friday or the Friday of this coming week. It'll be your chance to enter the Oregonian's NBA basketball sweepstakes and an exciting opportunity for you to see how your own team does. We told you in the first half that Terry Porter was a rebound shy of a thousand. He has picked it up, and so he has reached the milestone. Well, that's remarkable when you consider the position that Porter plays, but it also is a testament to his ability to get back in and dig some rebounds out. 72-57, Blazers by 15. 
Tucker. See, every shot that the Knicks have had to take has been a tough one. Flexer makes a catch and a save. Oh, my! Person and Drexler! That's what Jerome was trying to do the first time. They worked it the hard way. The Knicks have not really had any control offensively here in the third period of play against some good pressure by Portland. Mark Jackson, Oakley. Off the drive, throws it to Clyde. Drexler scores his goal and counts. You'd like to be in the head of Drexler right here, You're trying to figure out how am I going to score. I know I'm going to score. It's just a question of which way he comes across the defender. Trent Tucker picks up the foul, now has a chance for the three-point play. Drexler now 12 of 16 from the floor, 6 of 6 from the line. From our statistician, Stan Menashe. Foul is on Tucker, his third. Now Drexler has some glowing numbers for a career average against the New York Knicks. So this is one of the teams he likes to play against. And you can understand why, because they play that pressure game and that allows him to stay in the open court. Blazers up by 20. Strickland. Rod Strickland with a field goal. His first basket of the night has three points. Next pressure. Cursing. A rare mistake tonight by Jerome. Clyde still goes by to pat him on the back. Jerome's done a super job finding Clyde tonight. I think as well as he's done all year at finding Drexler. It's been a brilliant night of open court basketball by Portland. Sidney Green, wrong guy from outside. Porter. Duckworth. Yes. Good job of offensive patience by Duckworth. He let all the defenders go by. Knocked down a little medium range jump shot. 79 59. Portland, seven minutes to go in the third. Pete Myers now in the game for New York. And he scores. Didn't see him slide in. Myers picked up off the waiver wire two weeks ago. This is only his sixth game with New York. He's out of Arkansas, Little Rock. Drexler. Person. Went right through Jerome's hand. Timeout, 641 left third quarter. Portland running away from New York and leading by 18. lot about tempo and about the style that Portland plays when they're playing their best and certainly this would be ample video testimony for your uh, your performance as an expert witness Portland is playing very well and they're playing their game well they're playing their game and of course the fact that the other team pressures helps them but what they have done tonight better than they have done let's say over the past two weeks is get themselves into an open court game and take advantage of their easy opportunities and their defense has forced the opposition to shoot the ball over the top you look at the number of points the new york knicks have scored here in the third period of play just six they've been able to keep the ball out of ewing's hands when he's had it he's had to take tough shots and that's really allowed Portland to stay into an up-tempo basketball game. You see Portland Trailblazer general manager John Spolstra, and he's checking the computer line fast stats too. Ooh, <laughs> now those are awesome numbers. Well, that really is the ball game right there. The Trailblazers have been in the open court the entire evening. The Knicks have liked an up-tempo game, but they have not been able to get any easy chances down at the other end of the floor. Trailblazers tonight on their 35 baskets, 24 assists. New York on 24 baskets, only eight assists. <laughs> 641 left third quarter. You see the scoreboard. Portland up by 18. Mike Schiller will send Caldwell Jones back into the ball game. Along the front line, he'll pair with Kersey and Duckworth. Mark Bryant out. The backcourt remains the same. Drexler and Porter. Well, the Knicks had a tough ball game against the Sonics last night. Patino may realize his players may be fatigued out. They come back with Myers, Green, Wilkins, Wilkins, and Rod Strickland.
Strickland. Rod Strickland, two point basket. Well, Clyde Drexler has been the Jerry Rice of tonight's NBA spotlight game. Rice quite a show in the Super Bowl today with 12 catches for more than 200 yards. 49ers won it by four. Made the two of us happy. Here's Danny Young back in for Portland. 79 63 Blazers. 622 left third quarter. Gerald Wilson. Myers with the rebound. Nick's reset. Gerald Wilkins, Sidney Green, shot clock at five, Eddie Lee Wilkins. Foul in the battle for the rebound. White Pete, nice job Pete. You hear the voice of Rick Pitino congratulating Pete Myers. Myers played for San Antonio and when he was in the CBA participated in their slam dunk contest. So he has the ability to, to sky. And what you've got to try to do with Myers is, is with a lot of activity, just try to keep him away from the glass. Since Myers joined the Knicks, he has not missed a free throw. He's seven of seven. Rick Patino on the sideline. Foul on Sidney Green, I think. Sydney, second personal foul. One other NBA game today. Boston beat Detroit 112-99. Duckworth by Eddie Lee Wilkins. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Always like Patino's posture. He looks at him like, what are you doing? Then he said, just stay. Don't do anything. Just stay. Make him make that tough shot. Two shots. Two shots for Duckworth. After one year in New York in which the team had a below 500 record, Patino saw fit to put out his autobiography, Born to Coach. That's what happens when you're in New York. If you look at Patino on the whole, he's done a marvelous job at a very tender age of turning programs around at Boston University, at Providence College, and he's got the next turned around here. 80-64 Portland, five and a half left third. Eddie Lee Wilkins. Sydney Green. Five points for Sidney Green, it's 80-66. The New York has cut the 20-point lead down to 14. Well, they've kept Portland from striking very quickly, and that's where Portland was having such great success here at the top of the third period of play, staying in the open court, inside the Duckworth. Off the fine pass from the Clyde Drexler. Duckworth now with five in the quarter, 11 in the game. Drexler, six rebounds, four assists, plus his 31 points. Wilkins, Gerald scores. He has half a dozen. It's 82-68. Next pressure. Up with Danny Young, steal Pete Myers. Sidney Green. Twelve-point Blazer lead. Backcourt foul, Myers. It'll be his first. The Knicks will just stay after the basketball. They get the ball to Duckworth, and there's Myers from the rear making a strip on Danny Young. Leaves it for Sidney Green. He drives it home with two hands over the top. Danny Young at the free throw line. During the month of January, has shot very well. Clyde Drexler and Jerome Curcia. Fine round of applause. Standout effort from those two tonight. Five points for Danny Young. Blazers have shot their free throws very well this evening. 12 of 14. 84 70 Portland. Oh, Rod Strickland. 
Half a dozen for Strickland. 84-72. Adrian Brand lost control on the way up. Duckworth. Take the jump ball. I tell you, big time wrestling on the hardwood. Eddie Lee Wilkins, Kevin Duckworth, couple of super heavyweights. You wonder why they like Strickland so much in New York. You can see marvelous body control using the other side of the basket to protect, spins it off the glass for a tough two. Just over four minutes left, third quarter. 84-72 Portland. Now the Knicks have brought themselves back into a competitive position, but Portland controls that tap. Danny Young. Next ball on the Blazer turnover. Portland has turned the ball over 20 times tonight, and the Knicks a dozen. Blazers have had superior transition, great field goal shooting, and a tremendous night on the board. Wilkins. Oh, spectacular shot by Gerald, and the Knicks have stormed back to within 10. Mark Bryant will come in. Again, the Knicks showing that they have the ability to get back in a ball game, and when you have a big lead, you do expect to lose some of it. Wilkins, with a good left hand, picks up the personal foul, now has a chance for a three-point play. Foul was the third on Kevin Duckworth. Gerald Wilkins makes the three-pointer. Porter. Can't finish, Adrian Branch. Traveling call. Jack Madden with the call. And it's 84-75 as Rick Pitino verbally flagging his team back into the game. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. Move! Move! Gerald Wilkins. And it's now a seven-point game. Mike Schuler need a timeout? Well, instead of backing up, you want to continue to attack, so you've got to look down the floor. This group out on the floor for the Trailblazers has not had that chance. They're going to get a foul against Mark Bryan as he bodies Pete Myers under the basket. So that means free throws will be shot by the New York Knicks. 306 to go, third period, 84-77. The Blazers led... showing you he wants to make the New York Knicks team made a hustling recovery but Portland got a better break the ball came back and Terry Porter scored Wilkins inside team control timeout 242 left third quarter it's the Trailblazers 86 and the Knicks 79 On Saturday night, the Trailblazers battle the Atlanta Hawks, and if you're not already a Moldy Game Package subscriber, we'd encourage you to call your cable company this week and enjoy more exciting Trailblazer action. Atlanta will bring in Dominique Wilkins, Moses Malone, Reggie Theus, Doc Rivers. It's another Blazer cable game you won't want to miss. Again, 7 o'clock for NBA Signature, 7.30 tip-off, Portland and the Atlanta Hawks in their only, trail in their only uh, Coliseum appearance of the year. New York, Steve, eating 15 out of the 20-point lead away. What was the key, and what was Portland doing wrong? Well, you know, you look at this ball game, and in the first just about six minutes of the ball game, Portland's defense was supreme. They did a good job of keeping the Knicks out on the perimeter. They forced a turnover. They were able to get into the open court. The Knicks had scored just six points through six minutes, 49 seconds of the third period of play. Since that time, they have scored 18 points, in just about four minutes of play, you look at the Knicks scoring in this period off the bench. Well, they've had a lot of fresh people come in, play very aggressively. Portland put some of their better players down on the bench, and the tempo of the game has now turned in favor of the New York Knicks, but Portland still has the lead. Pat 
Lafferty, Steve Jones courtside at the Memorial Coliseum. Here watching on Blazer Cable as Mike Schuler sends his charges back on the floor. They saw a 20-point lead cut to five. It's now seven with 2.40 to go in the quarter. Mostly reserve units still on the floor. Terry Porter. Mark Bryant with Patrick Ewing back in for New York. Bryant can't score. Battle for the rebound. And the ball belongs to New York. Lost off the tip, fingertips of Adrian Brandt. Well, Brandt's trying to get it just couldn't quite control it. And Gerald Wilkins feels right now the Knicks got something going. He's out there encouraging everybody in blue to make and move because he feels that they can get back in the ball game. Pete Myers can't control it. Bryant with a steal. Just over two minutes to go in the quarter. Brandt spins away from Myers. And the rebound to Sidney Green, away from Mark Bryant. Good job by Mark denying the outlet pass. Strickland, that quick. Foul called. Danny Young, I believe. Well, it's called a delay or a drag dribble, and Strickland does it as well as anybody that's coming to the NBA. Looks like he's going one way and then brings it back. That opens the lane up for him, and he's right at the basket. Danny Young picks up the personal. You ever master the drag dribble? No, I just pulled up and shot it. Clyde Drexler, Jerome Kersey back in. Adrian Branch and Danny Young come out. So Mike Schuler plays trump cards with a minute 52 left in the third quarter. What you're more concerned about at this point is regaining the momentum and control of the basketball game. 86-81, Portland. You hear Strickland telling Ewing, get back, because he wants to make sure they got somebody to protect the middle. Shot clock's at 10. Drexler, 33 points for Clyde Drexler. 13 in the first, 13 in the second, and seven here in the third, despite a good rest on the bench. 125 left in the quarter. Ewing. Ewing has not had many chances to work solo. Hops that one in. 88-83, Portland. Caldwell finds Drexler. Duckworth. Yes. Kevin Duckworth. Seven in the quarter, 13 in the game. Blazer lead is seven a minute to go. They're going to come back to Ewing if they can. Gerald Wilkins. Wilkins has had a big period. He's got nine to bring the Knicks back. Not with Patrick Ewing. Out to Porter. Blazers do not have a three-point field goal tonight. Duckworth. Well, Duckworth got his feet tangled up and just coughed the ball up, and so the Knicks have it back with Strickland pushing. Porter trying for the steal. Porter called for the foul. Second personal foul on Terry Porter. Again, if you were away for a few moments at halftime, as Charles Oakley gets ready to check back in for New York, Steve Johnson turned the left ankle again in the first half and will not be available for duty here in the second half. For New York, only Kenny Walker not playing. He has his stomach flu. Strickland misses the free throw. And now we see Oakley come back in. Oakley came into the Coliseum tonight off of a string of 12 straight double-doubles, points and rebounds in 12 straight games. Tonight he has only four points and only four rebounds. Well, when the team is shooting 60-plus percent, there are not going to be a lot of rebounds available. 90-86, Portland by four. Drexler with Ewing back. Oh, heartbreak roll for Clyde. Strickland. Wilkins, fade away. Wild battle on the floor. They'll jump it up. I'll tell you, big bodies on the floor. Well, Oakley and Ewing for... Oakley and Ewing for New York and Duckworth for Portland. Patino was telling his team after they got that ball back, they should have looked for one, but Wilkins realizing it was a transition opportunity, hard to really turn that chance down. Portland comes out of it with the jump ball. Nine seconds in the quarter. Strickland. The tap goes. I think they'll give it to Strickland. Strickland. Three seconds there. 
Three seconds left in the quarter. And that'll do it. The New York Knicks take 18 off the Blazers' 20-point lead in a stirring comeback. And we go to the final period with Portland leading New York by only two. 88 as we go to the fourth and final period. Knicks ball, and they have a chance to tie. Computer land fast ads. Well, the guys that brought them back in the ball games, Gerald Wilkins and Rod Strickland. Strickland with 11 in the period, 9 for Gerald Wilkins as the Knicks look to Ewing. Ewing to Pete Myers. Strickland. Twenty-four second violation. Well, the Knicks were confused offensively. Strickland heard the green and had to get the ball in the air. Drexler breaks free. Kersey can't score. Ewing. Drexler saves. Leave for Duck. Lost the ball again. Here's Strickland. Great defensive play. Clyde Drexler. End-to-end -end action by Drexler. Duckworth. Travel with the ball. Wow, what a tough stretch for Duck. Three turnovers in just the last few minutes for Duckworth. And we've got a timeout called by Mike Schuler. 11-11 to go in the ball game. Portland hanging on to a two-point lead. Well, Steve, I know Kevin Duckworth isn't the first uh, player in the NBA, ABA college or high school to go through a stretch like that. Sometimes it just seems like that ball's lopsided and you just can't get a handle on it. Well, it wasn't so much the bad stretch. Two times he was put in a position where he really didn't have anything to do. He was trying to work one time offensively, got his feet tangled up, turned it over. At this end, he thought someone was going to be available, and they weren't. Suddenly, he is stuck. He had committed himself to a move. What they've got to do now is just settle down, get back to what they did well in order to build the league. You're not going to get 20 points back right away, but they can get back and get control of the game by being the aggressor and attack. Last night, uh, New York lost a tough game in Seattle, 121 to 119, so it's their second tough game in the Northwest in 24 hours. But Patino made a nice move, Stephen, going with young legs. Not as big scores or stars, but it's the fresh legs that got him back in. Well, it works when they get results. Strickland comes in the period, gets 11 points. Wilkins, who had not been a big factor last night, comes in, plays very well. Between the two, they get 20 points. When the Knicks weren't scoring well, when you look at that third period, they had guys that had played long and hard the night before, so he made the adjustment, and Portland made an adjustment at the same time, and the Knicks won with that adjustment. Eleven eleven to play at the Memorial Coliseum, Computerland Fast X. Turnovers have hurt the Trailblazers. That's what the Knicks wanted to try to create. It didn't hurt them so much in the first half of play, but in the third period, it was key. Wilkins breaks free. Gerald Wilkins. Ball grabbed by Jerome Kersey. So the Knicks miss his second chance to tie. Drexler for Duckworth. Porter. Kersey quickly inside. Ball lost. Caldwell Jones. Here's Rod Strickland. Wilkins. Ewing. Blocked by CJ. Ewing again. Blocked by Caldwell. Score it. Patrick Ewing. And we are tied at 90. That is our first tie since 26. The Knicks do a good job of moving the ball around. Portland did a better job of reacting. Caldwell Jones gets that one, swats it away. Ewing stays after it with the long arm, finger rolls it back in. Pressure by the Knicks. Drexler at the basket and the foul. He's fouled by Ewing. He'll try for another three-point play. Clyde has 35. This is the first chance that Portland has had in some time to get at the basket in the transition opportunity. Drexler gets the foul against Ewing. That is his third first team. His first miss at the line tonight after making seven straight. Clyde, 14 of 20 from the floor, seven of eight from the line, seven rebounds, five assists. Gerald Wilkins, what? Look at Patino. Oh, Patino explodes. Gerald Wilkins. 
pounding the hardwood. Well, you know that explosion comes sometimes in anticipation and hope. Drexler. Clyde Drexler with 37 points. And New York wants a timeout. 10.07 to play. Portland 94, New York 90. They say one of the yardsticks for a superstar is when you can take over the game and dominate when your team needs it the most. And that's what Clyde Drexler is doing again tonight. We'll see more of that action on Saturday night when the Blazers battle the Atlanta Hawks. If you're not already a multi-game package subscriber, call your cable company and catch the action. NBA Signature starts at 7. Game time is 7.30. Let's go to the Fiddler, John Newton. Check turnovers once again. Well, again, you talk about by the half, the Knicks cut their number down, the Trailblazers increased, and the points off of them hurt the Trailblazers dramatically. Ten oh seven left. You're watching the action live and in stereo from the Memorial Coliseum, 94-90, Portland. The last two times down the floor, you've seen graphic illustration of how shot blocking can get beat and even though it's the last line of defense if you've got a great offensive player with some quick ability he's going to hurt you Wilkins inside draws a foul from the rear Colwell Jones trying to make the block anytime you get a pass that can penetrate and get a player that deep you're going to have some problems Colwell Jones thought he would get the ball Wilkins got it away third foul on CJ each team with one team foul in the quarter. Duckworth with a rebound, and it's 94-92. Jones. Finds Drexler. Boy, Drexler! 39 for Clyde the Glide. With the left hand around the defense of Patrick Ewing. 96-92. What a showcase for Clyde Drexler. They double and see the Knicks haven't found where that double team is coming from. They get Strickland the ball. It's knocked away. Shot clock at seven. Oakley for Myers. Shot clock at three. Strickland. Beautiful play by Myers to find Rod Strickland. Strickland with 14, 13 in this half. 96, 94, Duckworth. Lost the ball to Ewing. Nine minutes to play. Strickland. Wilkins. Foul call. It's on Kevin Duckworth. Well, Wilkins is down, and uh, he took a pretty good shot, so he's still on the floor. But he has been a very active player, unfortunately, for Portland the last time down. They didn't get the ball to the right man. Myers was open on the wing. They gave it to Wilkins, who ended up taking a tougher try. Fourth personal foul against Kevin Duckworth, second team. Maybe a foul out of some frustration. Duckworth closing in on the Trailblazer all-time record. He has nine turnovers tonight. the types of turnovers that Duck has had, if they have been of the unforced variety, you have to be very concerned. The Knicks have done a good job of pressuring the ball. Ewing, the last time, slapped it away. And against pressure, what you want to try to do is move the ball, move people a beat quicker. Wilkins gets both of the free throws. And we're tied again at 96. Mark Bryant in. Kevin Duckworth out. Percy away from the double team. 
Brian Trapp. Yeah, they tie him up. Drexler at the basket. From Terry Porter. Clyde Drexler now with 41, 98, 96, and 835 left. Drexler indeed has a legitimate shot at a 50-point night. And Steve, we may need it. Ewing, yeah. back away. Porter. Percy. Yes, Percy. 196. Timeout, New York. Well, you'll see Drexler come in and push that ball away, and that allowed that opportunity to get started. Porter finally gets control, leaves it for the trailer, Jerome Kersey, who glides in and drops it down. From the Clyde Drexler Showcase, watch this. Well, the thing that makes this so impressive is the fact that he changed it with then just cocked the hammer and threw it down against a very good defender in Patrick Union. Well, it may not be Godzilla, but here's what happens when Bigfoot Take a look at our computer land fast ads, fast break efficiency, and look at these numbers. Now, the numbers are outstanding, but again, you look at the scoreboard, and you say, well, Portland should have a bigger lead. They lost the momentum and control, and we've talked about it many times. The team can get tied, but if they don't go past, they many times never make that big break. Mark Jackson back in the ball game. Well, he's had a chance to get fresh legs. Strickland gave him an awful long rest, and Strickland played very well. Johnny Newman also back in. Wilkins still remains on the floor. Now, you can see why people many times say Brad Strickland needs to have more playing time. Wilkins with the quick drive. We have 7.57 to play. It's 100 to 96. Foul is on Mark Ryan. Wilkins has been attacking since the third period of play. And again, that's part of his game is a slashing type of game back at the free throw line. He has got 13 points in the second half of play, working on a chance to get to 15. off with this unit out on the floor. Now Portland will have to come back with some good half-court defense. Now offense. Drexler. Five, Drexler. 43 for Drexler. And Drexler tonight having one of the greatest shooting nights of his career in terms of percentage, 18 for 24. But a lot of them have been at the hoop. Well, the key is you have to make them. He's had a lot of tough tries at the hoop. Johnny Newman. Ewing on the follow. Patrick Ewing is 17. 102 and 100. Drexler scores again at the hoop. Todd Drexler with 45. The all-time Blazers scoring record is 51. It's held by Jeff Petrie. He did it twice. 104-100. Jackson. Newman for three. Drexler for Percy. Portland by six, 640 to play. Patrick Ewing. 
Now you know why they double on Ewing. He's a very, very effective offensive player. Brings the Knicks back to within four. Drexel was at the basket, but the pass didn't get there in time. Porter, pressured by Jackson. No hand check foul. Mark Bryant, shot clock at five. And now the foul is called. Bryant will be at the line and shoot two. Well, you see the Knicks have hands all over the place, and again, a lot of it is style. Their style is very aggressive, and you can't call all of the foul, all the contact in the NBA, but they get this one as Mark Ryan spins away from the hoop. Porter out of the ball game. Danny Young in. Mark Ryan. Here's Kevin Duckworth back in. Caldwell Jones will come out. And for CJ as the 38 year old veteran goes to the bench and Bryant gets both free throws. So Mark Bryant, a very solid night tonight. He has a dozen points. The crowd has got the right thing on their mind right now. They need they want some stops. The Knicks come back to Ewing. Wilkins tips it in. Big tip. Spectacular underhanded tap. Eight in the quarter, 21 in the game for Gerald Wilkins. 108-104. Kersey with Johnny Newman. Kersey, 17 for Jerome. 110-104, 5.30 to go. Ewing. Ball is called and Ewing will be at the line. Let's go back and watch that Wilkins play. The Knicks are a very aggressive basketball team at both ends of the floor, and when the defense breaks down, they have some good athletes. Wilkins comes over the top, enough body control to get around without the foul tip it in. Ewing comes back at the other end, trying to work for his hook, couldn't get it, gets a foul against Duckworth. Duckworth picks up his first fifth personal foul and will go back out of the ball game. Caldwell Jones returns. 524 left. This would make it a four-point game. You hear Patrick Ewing making a call. That's for the press they'll use if he scores. Newman. Deflection and the ball remains with New York. Much to the dislike of the sellout crowd. Wilkins and Drexler. Holding foul call by Jack Madden. Well, the bad thing about that is you're in the penalty with that foul. So Ewing will go back to the line. It was a good play because it kept Ewing from rolling and jamming over the top. He'll have to earn it from the free throw line. Blazers for the night shooting 62%. New York at 48%. Ewing with 20 points, season average 22. A nervous Rick Pitino paces the Knicks sideline. Portland 110, New York 106. 5-10 to go. It's been a good one tonight. Glad to have you with us. Hope you've enjoyed it. CJ around Ewing, followed by Oakley. Well, you heard Patino tell Patrick Ewing, ISO, stay at home. He didn't stay at home. He went for the face. At that point, with a big guy, you want him shooting it from the perimeter. Ewing went for the block that never, the ball never got in the air. And there was Caldwell Jones attacking at the iron with two hands. Second foul on Oakley, third team foul on New York. Blazers already have committed five team fouls. Caldwell Jones has blocked seven shots tonight, Steve. And that's a high for any Blazer this year. Terry Porter is in. Clyde Drexler comes out. I would guess this would be a short rest. Five minutes to go. Blazers up by four. And Drexler on fire with 45. Well, the idea is to try to get him a quick breather and get him back in the ball game. Oh, well, Jones gets one of two. First point tonight for CJ. 111-106. Ewing. Mark Jackson. 
no shot. Foul on Caldwell Jones. Call for the body bump. Portland has beaten New York eight straight times here at the Coliseum, trying to make it nine. In the first half, they were forcing Ewing to give the ball up a little bit sooner. Now he's able to hold it and make a decision, one that's putting more pressure on the defensive player. He's been at the line the last three times, but only come away shooting 50%. We'll see if he gets them both this time. got 10 as he keeps the Knicks close at the three-point ball game. 111, 108, 440 to go. Now what you have to do is find some offense, so you've got to get the ball in the hands of someone that can make a basket. Porter with penetration. Percy missed. Make the follow by Jerome, but he can't score. Here's Wilkins. Travis. Hop, skip, and the jump. Wilkins argues the case. Gerald Wilkins right here took too many steps oh, as he crossed over trying to get into the lane. The idea was a good one, but he needed an extra bounce. Now Portland, again, needs to find a basket. Shot clock at nine. Mark Bryant, double team. Caldwell, CJ on the offensive glass. 113-108, five-point Blazer lead inside four minutes to go. Blazers want the steal, instead they'll get the foul. Jerome Kersey, uh, correction, Caldwell Jones called for the foul, and that is his fifth. So Duckworth and Caldwell, both with five, and after a rest of one minute on the game clock, Clyde Drexler will come in between free throws. Johnny Newman at the line. Has not scored in this half. In. Mark Bryant is out. So the Blazers now with Caldwell Jones in the middle. And then it's Drexler and Kersey at the forwards, Young and Porter in backcourt. So it's a very quick team now for Mike Schuler's Blazers. And Johnny Newman has 14. It's 113, 110. 350 to play, and we're ready for another run down Ulcer Gulch. In these situations, Portland would like to go inside. They have no inside player. The next five pressure. When you grab a man around the head, it's a foul. You just hope the official doesn't see it. Wilkins can't believe that he got caught. You'll see right there, a little chuck, and then he comes back in with another one. But that is a fourth team foul, second personal against Gerald Wilkins. Isolation and Percy has got to take advantage of his quickness against Oakley. Steele, New York. Jackson lost it on the behind the back dribble. Drexler is free. Don't go. The right decision, but the ball didn't go in. A three-pointer would tie it. Jackson. Strong drive. Foul is on the pass. With 3.08 to go, the Blazers leading by three. New York will be at the line and a chance to make it a one-point game. They call a foul against Drexler. Fourth personal on five. Portland led by four after one by nine at the half. Build a 20-point lead in the third quarter. Saw New York close it to 90-88 starting this quarter. Now, a two-point game. Mark Jackson has 16. Duckworth back in. Kersey is out. Jackson last year was supremely confident in these situations of getting both of the pressure free throws. He hasn't done quite so well this year, but he gets both of these. Jackson, two assists tonight. Terry Porter with 15. 113-112, a one-point game. Jackson with Young. Danny keeps it away. Double team. Young. Lost the ball. Wilkins. Next lead. 114-113 to 50 to go. 
23 for Gerald Wilkins. The Knicks have now gone ahead, and it's time for Portland to respond. And all they have to do is get back to the aggressive style of play, move the ball against the pressure. Rexler to Duckworth. Blocked by Ewing. Ball left out of bounds, and off Kevin Duckworth with 2.28 to go. Duckworth spun away, couldn't control. It looked like Mark Jackson lost that ball out of bounds. Porter, tough against Jackson. Blazers double. Check clock at 10. Ewing, Knicks lead by three. Mike Schiller needs a timeout. He'll, he'll take one. 2.08 to play in the game, and the Knicks lead 116 to 113. Steve certainly trailed Blazer fans here in the arena and uh, around the Northwest watching on Blazer Cable tonight will be very disappointed if Portland loses, but you have to admire New York's comeback. 20 down in the third. They played and lost by two in Seattle last night, and it speaks very well for the determination and courage of that Rick Pitino team. Well, the Knicks never gave up, and they continue to apply pressure, and that forced Portland away from what had got them the lead, and they have now got themselves into a dogfight, and they haven't really been able to reestablish. When they got back on top very quickly, it was by finding Drexler right at the basket. He hammered it home. He had a big period, and he had 12 in the period. Went out for a quick breather, and at that point, Portland had to a five to six point lead, but got in the penalty situation, and Knicks were able to score cheaply from there. You look at a dramatic bench scoring difference, and everyone will say that was the ball game, but the Knicks bench has played a bigger role tonight than the Trailblazers, and really have had more chances to score. 116-113. Clyde Drexler has had an unbelievable night tonight. We've talked about his 45 points. It's the second highest scoring game in his NBA career. He's made 19 of 26 shots. And you would think this is the time when the team would really look to him. He's been so sensational tonight that it almost would be a, an oversight if you don't direct the offense around this, this guy the way he's played. Usually in these situations, Portland likes to center the ball. They had that ball in the hands of Duckworth the last time down. We'll see if they come back with that. But what they need more than that is a basket, a good, aggressive attempt at the hoop where it seems as though they are the ones that have control of what they want to do. The Knicks have had them tentative in what they've tried to do at the offensive end. 116-113. Knicks tonight, 27 free throws have been made. The Blazers, 15. Difference of 12 there. Again, they're looking for Duckworth. Find Drexler with Gerald Wilkins. Lost control of the ball. Foul is on Terry Pitt. Steve, that's Portland's 29th turnover of the game. Well, this one hurts because they were going against the shot clock, and they knew they had to get a ball in the air, and they have not. Jackson comes back in, pushes the ball the other way. Porter picks up the personal foul. Mark Jackson on the free throw. He now has 18 points. 117-113. And 118-113. A minute 45 to go. And now the Blazers need somebody to step forward on offense. Terry Porter wide open. Tough roll. Oakley the rebound. Now, Portland's got to come back with some defensive pressure. They have got to force the Knicks to shoot that ball over the top. Shot clock at nine. Jackson for three. Duckworth with the rebound. Percy. Drexler. Yes, he scores his foul. Seven for Drexler, he'll have a chance at 48. Well, Portland has had their greatest success tonight when they've been in the open court, and Drexler gets a nice pass from Kersey and drives it home. Mark Jackson said he held him off. Drexler gets a three-point play. 48 for Drexler, 15 in the quarter, and Steve, tonight, Jerome Kersey has 10 assists. 118-116, a minute five left. 
Wilkins with Kersey. Inside a minute, you see the game time remaining. Jackson likes it in these situations. Five on the shot clock. Wilkins, rebound Drexler. Call for the double dribble, no foul call. I can't believe it. Mike Schuler and the Blazers staff can't believe it. They're all up. Rick Adelman, John Wetzel, Maurice Lucas. Uh, you'll take a look at what happens. Drexler starts the dribble right here and he reaches in and the ball is knocked away from him. It comes up and what he did was touch it with both hands and that's what the official said. You double up on the ball. But the replay also shows he's hit on the left hand coming out of backcourt. Let's look at it again. Watch Clyde's left hand get hit. It'll be coming up in just a moment. Uh, the crowd here at the Coliseum feels that they got beat by the whistle, and you'll see the ball comes out. Drexler is coming down right there. The ball is really swiped. Ewing got looked like a piece of ball, but the ball, the hand is considered part of the ball. At any rate, the ball came up, and Drexler touched it with both hands. Clyde Drexler with 48. Two shy of his career high, three shy of the all-time Trailblazers scoring record, 51. Jeff Petrie did it twice against Houston. I think the thing, again, you have to be concerned about at this point in the ball game with 46 left, seconds left to go in the game. You don't have possession. You want a good stop. You want to make sure that the New York Knicks have a tough try. They're forcing that shot to come over the top, rebound the ball. You're only down by two. You don't want to give them an easy chance to score. I remember, I, I wonder why our director, George Wash, <laughs> has focused in on young boys. Joey Borgia, his father, one of the NBA greats, Sid Borgia, as an official for so many years in the 50s and 60s. Mike Schuller. I'll tell you, that three-point play a moment ago by Drexler, really a crucial clutch play. Portland was down five and moving towards the one-minute mark. Now it's a two-point game. Knicks have the ball, but you've got time for a stop and maybe time for two good cracks at the basket. But what you need is a stop. Caldwell jumps Kevin Duckworth, Kersey on the front line, Drexler Porter, the Blazer backcourt. 46 seconds left, shot clock at 24. Now you know the Knicks are going to try to use as much of this as they can. They go to Ewing. Off they travel. Looked like it should have been a foul called one way or the other, but they go with the traveling call. And now Portland has the ball in 35 left. Well, what Portland's got to do is give themselves two chances at time. They've got to attack very quickly. Again, they're going to try to get something inside going through Duckworth. Duckworth Ewing. Now, they double with Oakley. That means that someone's open. They get it back to Duckworth at the basket. We've got a foul. And it's on Kersey in the battle for the rebound as Duck misses right at the toll gate. the third on Jerome Kersey. Here's the action. They got Duckworth the ball right where he could use it, but the defensive pressure of Ewing made a tougher try than they thought, and now they fight for the ball, and they say that Jerome Kersey pushed off. Ewing got both free throws the last time. What you hope for in this situation is one of two or possibly missing them both, and we'll see how the big guy responds. The big guys, the first free throw is key. 27 for Patrick Ewing. One nineteen, one sixteen. Blazers need to have a Ewing miss and keep it at three. And they get it. Timeout. Mike Schuler wants a timeout. 14 seconds left, and now I'll have a chance to set his offense. 14 seconds to play. Okay, Steve, 14 seconds left. You're in the Mike Schuler huddle. What would you like to see your team do? Well, you've got to get a hoop. That's all there is to it. You've got to give yourself two chances to score and either tie the ball game up or get within one. What they'll try to do is strike very quickly, and then they'll try to come back and make a steal on the ball and hope that if they steal it, they get score that way. 
You can always go for a three-point attempt, but if you miss that opportunity, you're almost certain to be in a position where you're going to have to come back and foul. So they'll try to go for the quick two and then come back with the steal on the ball and hopefully get a chance to get one of two or get that free throw to miss both of them and have a chance to win it that way. With 35 seconds left, the Blazers had the ball, and usually Mike Schuler likes his club to get off a shot somewhere above 28. So if, in fact, the other team has possession for 24, you still give yourself a second crack at the basket. And they chose to go with the more deliberate half-court set. Well, they wanted to get the ball to Duckworth. And that is what the attack was set up to do, and that's what they almost always do. They tripled, they forced him away from but they got Duckworth the ball at the iron. Ewing's defense forced him in. I guess you have to wonder about that a little bit because Kevin has struggled so badly tonight. He has not shot particularly well. He's turned the ball over nine times. Now you get down to crunch time, and, and yet you're going to a guy who's had such a tough night. We go to Computerland Fast Ass. Well, you see the percentage for both teams is high, but look at the New York Knicks in this period from the free throw line. For the ball game, the Knicks are 30 of 39. The Blazers 16 of 20. All right. On the floor for the Trailblazers, the there are three good three-point shooters on the floor. The most accurate is Danny Young, but Porter and Drexler are also above 33%. Portland down three, 14 seconds left. Well, the key for Portland is to get a good inbounds pass and get a good chance to get the ball in the air. Pass to Drexler, knocked away by Johnny Newman. Each team, one full timeout left. Jack Madden wanted to take know. what the defense is going to give you in this situation. They're going to give Portland a chance to go right at the basket the way everyone is thinking about a three. So if you fake out and go back door, you have a chance to score. Porter for three. Rebound, Charles Oakley. Well, they can't let them run out the clock. And Danny Young wisely gets the foul with seven seconds left, but Wilkins can now ice the game for the Knicks. Seven seconds left. And many of the fans now heading for the exits at the Coliseum as a chagrin Mike Schuler looks on. Portland has seen a 20-point lead slide off the table, and the Knicks now have a chance to put it away. Here's one guy largely responsible. He has 23 points. Gerald Wilkins, he is perfect at the line tonight. No, I'm sorry, he has missed one. 120-116. Blazers will lose their third straight and second straight here at home. Tough loss, Steve. Drexler does not get the shot. Well, I guess they would have counted it had it gone, but it doesn't, and it's all over. New York comes from 20 down in the final of the Coliseum tonight as Rick Pitino will celebrate with his team. New York won 20.